separation. You are an animal species. There's nothing magical about your physiology that separates you. The laws that govern physiology, gravity, that's not a physiological law, but you know, you, you, the gravity works on humans the same way it does on chimps and the same way it does on frogs. Is that true? So I want you to understand this concept that we could feed you know, our children things that we wouldn't feed our dog is insanity. I see it often, you know, don't feed that to the dog, sweetheart. You know, these, these, that, that, that will, that's bad for the dog. The, this chips and this, this soda pop is for you and your friends. <laughs> you know? And so, um, you know, that's funny until you know what I know. And then when you know what I know, it's murdering a kid. You know, really? Sadly, isn't that, I mean, it's, that's, a, that's a hard thing to say, isn't it? Sprint is not that hard to say. It's probably hard to hear. I can say it quite easily now because I know it's true and I could draw out the physiological pathways between soda and chips and artificial coloring and hydrogenated fat and all that crap that you feed your kids and I could draw out the pathways and show you why they're sick. It's not a mystery to me why we have the sickest species on the planet or why our half of our children are overweight or why childhood cancers and, and, and we now have chronic illnesses in children. So before I start to talk to you about some of the stats about chronic illness and what's really happened, we've gone from the super species to the sickest species in about a century. We are in the midst of an, an enormous pandemic of chronic illness to the point where it's crippling our culture and our society. What we know is that when people get chronically ill, they stay chronically ill. The data that we have is overwhelmingly clear, it's unequivocal as we would say in science, that what we've done for the last 50 years is spent more money per year on medications and surgery, on medical doctors and nurses and hospitals, and for those same 50 years that the expense on drugs, the number of prescriptions have gone up by 55 times since the 1960s per person. You now consume 55 times the amount of prescription drugs as a nation than you did just in the, in the mid-60s. Chronic illness rates are on a steady incline. Obesity rates by themselves have gone up by about 600% in the last decade and a half. Type 2 diabetes had to be renamed. It used to be called adult onset diabetes. They had to change the name. Why? Because it was onsetting for so many children that they couldn't call it adult onset anymore. You've been taught to believe that the solution to our problems with our health are going to come from drugs and surgery. We all got taught that. It's on television every time there's a commercial break. And the fact of the matter is, that's how our entire system is run. You still probably have a deep-seated belief system that, you know, somewhere in the future there's going to be a magical scientific discovery of what drug is going to fix our problems. You're still taught to refer out people who have chronic illness. So what I've done over the last 20 years or so is I've, I've decided that, listen, clearly what we're doing isn't working. What I needed to find out was, is it not working because we just haven't found the right drug in surgery? Is it not working because we're just not getting to people early enough? Or is it not working because it's just the wrong approach and it will never work? I had to figure that out. The first thing I, I wanted to do was I said, wait a minute. There are really two important questions. Before I start out on any sort of endeavor, I always want to figure out what the right question is. So the right questions for me, for our society, the most important questions facing all of us, not just in healthcare, but as parents, as children, as spouses, as siblings, the most important question facing our species is why are we so sick? Because if we don't understand why we're sick, there's no possible way we're going to find the right solution about how to get and stay well. The current prevailing allopathic sickness and treatment system believes that we are sick because we are genetically predetermined to illness, that we have inherent weaknesses that create pathological cell function that lead to heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, obesity, ADHD, depression, anxiety, impotence, infertility. Therefore, they, because they believe that, they feel that a rational approach is to override the body's innate abilities to self-heal and self-regulate with drugs 
drugs are targeted at blocking the body's ability to regulate itself. They stop, they block the pathways, and they override those systems because what a drug does, or someone who prescribes it says, I need to override the intelligence of the body because it's making errors, and I need to intervene from the outside in and override that and take control of it. I need to take control of physiology from the outside because the body's making errors. 